Okay, we have more challenges. Need help and Instagram. We've played with Instagram before. A4. I just take here on C5. It's a funny end game when whenever Black plays F5 in this kind of structure, um, I feel like it's the Dutch defense, and um, I have this kind of joke that you know many rook end games are lost because you played the Dutch defense. If I can get my rooks on the seventh, I guess it's lost for white. So the easiest thing to do is to convert like to rook and two versus uh, rook and two connected past pawns basically. So I was just expecting here like to get um, either a mating attack or make him play g4. Yeah, this is what I figured. So we take and um, check, 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 take on g4 at some point. So the two connectors should win. Um, Got to watch out for the occasional stalemate type trick here. Peoples. Oh man, I was playing the Hungarian Team Championship last week and there was this teammate of mine. Our team ended up losing this match by half a point because my teammate, he struggled and struggled and the whole game he wasn't winning and then he finally reached a winning position with Rook in 3 against Rook in 2 and blundered a stalemate trap. It was just like... God, he finally reached a winning position after like 80 moves. What am I doing here? Um, a little hard to make progress sometimes when the rook pawns are, when the rook pawn is involved as part of the two connected past pawns, it's definitely a little harder to make progress than like pawns that are in the center. Isn't there a new person that might be India's new top chess player? Definitely. Um, Anish Giri. But he lives in the Netherlands, right? Are you guys talking about a different player? Um, like this new Indian player who won the B tournament at Tata. Is that who you're talking about? Well, I mean, I don't know. I was really bummed out to see that result because I wanted my friend Alexei Dreyev to win. Um, I'm so sorry that he didn't win the B tournament in, uh, in Tata. He's a good friend of mine and a great player. And he, he's the best player in the B tournament there. He was so close, but I guess he didn't win on tie breaks. There was like a three-way tie for first and second in the second tournament. And... I don't remember the guys from India who who won the qualifier to play the Tata main event. There's an article about him, like on Chess Base, I think. But I really wanted to see Dreyev play in the in the main tournament. He's been so close to the elite chess world and just not quite made the top top top. And it's been a long time since he played in an elite tournament, I think. Um, yeah, it's hardest to make progress with this rook pawn. Kind of notorious. And you've got to watch out for stalemate ideas here, too. That's a little tricky. I think... Uh, the last time I played this was against Grandmaster Alex Scherzer. Now, mm, right, check. To kind of remember how to do it, because I haven't studied this in a long time. Kramnik 
Kranigiri, yeah, I did this lecture for that game. It was so sick. Kranik just crushing Giri. A much more complete player, Kramnik. Okay, GG. If, if he plays King H2 at the end there, guys, I have G3 check, Rook takes G3, Rook G2, or C2 check. That's the point. So it's that, that idea that allows me to make, to convert that to a win. Okay, Instagram and need help. I don't know which one of you guys challenged me first. Guys, about 15 minutes left. We got time for maybe two games. Thanks, everyone. Oh, Instagram challenged me 3 2. Okay, it's okay. It's a little fast. I would prefer 5 2. Any of the candidates can beat uh, Carlson despite Anand. You mean except for Anand and Nakamura? Um, well, I think Caruana and, K and Kramnik are the best hope. And I spoke about Aronian before, but I don't think. I just don't think he's he's as into it as he needs to be. Um, if Aronian was a little more serious, I think he would have a chance too. H3. I don't think Geary's ready yet. He needs more seasoning. Grishok there made a little like movement toward 2800, but he's kind of like playing too much poker or something. I don't know. I was talking about this as a poker chess player too. I mean, I understand that, you know, he's interested in other stuff, but I mean, you're that close to like the top. I wouldn't mess around with the second game, you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of weird. Um, Grishok. I would devote all my energies to... If I was as good as Grishuk, I don't think I would split my concentration between more than one game. Bishop g5. Because Grishuk just seems like he was so close to like being one of the best five in the world, but needed to just grind it out a little bit more. So guys, I'm streaming every day, Monday to Friday, like 10 a.m. to, well, 12.30 Central European time, here on Lee Chess. Well, talking about chess history and past world championship matches and whatever, I mean, a lot has changed in terms of time controls. Practicality is like king now. The World Championship matches used to be much slower time control, and Carlsen is the master of being practical. It seems like his openings, his whole treatment of the game, he's a product of modern chess. I mean, he has a very, very strong endgame skill, as I witnessed firsthand. He literally i mean he's been playing like an old grandmaster technically speaking since he was 12 years old what is this bishop e3 here i thought about g5 but i thought this is a really weakening move for black Just be careful i don't get my bishop trapped or something so guys, yeah, let's hope for Anand not playing Carlson again. We want to see Kramnik or at least Caruana. One or the other are the best chances to vanquish Carlsen. I don't really see anyone else having a serious shot. I mean, Kramnik can probably draw him to death. And Caruana might be able to beat him. If he has a good match. So I guess I win a pawn here, bishop takes c6. This was the original plan. 
I'm not like in love with giving away pawns, but uh, I mean bishops, whatever. But it's a Freudian thing. Uh, I I like pawns, even if I have to give up my bishop. Draw him to death. Yeah, he'll draw him to death, dude. Like he did against. He frustrated the hell out of Kasparov. I mean, Kasparov just gave up after. I mean, he you know he's he quit chess, man. After a match with Kravdik, where he couldn't win a single game, he just quit chess. That's it. Wow, f4. Interesting move. I'm going to take the pawn this way. Keep my bishop. No doubt, like, guys, Carlson, as, oh my god, Cherry said, will be prepared physically. He has a lot of energy. He has more money than the other people. He has a team of helpers, probably, a la Kasparov. Not like the old, like, KGB days, but... Yeah, I agree. I mean, Carlson is definitely the favorite in, in any scenario. Um, but I think that Kramnik could hold a draw against him, possibly in a match. Especially since it's not not going to be like a 24-game match, I assume. Um, anything could happen like a 12-game match or whatever. Here. And... What about Knight G4? G5. And Caruana is also young, has a lot of energy, so. Um, I'd like to see that happen. Guys, on Sundays, I started my first simul. Played on, uh, let's see, like 20-some boards yesterday here on Lee Chess. Managed to win the simul, barely. So check it out. Uh, we're streaming that live every Sunday night. And, uh, whoops. Check. So, I thought that would be fun. Something to do a little different. Alright, good game. We've got time for another game, guys. Who's in the uh, challenge department here? Need help. Need help, 2193. I don't know what happened to Espresso Forever. Must have gone gone to sleep early tonight. Trying to play C5 before White even moves. I like the series Kramnik Comes Home Tonight F3 by Vigorito. Probably it was Vigorito on chesslecture.com. It wasn't me. And David loves, you know, like the Knight F3 Kramnik style, so... Only way ye will be able to dethrone Carlson. Mark my word. Well, if if a Chinese player wins the world championship, I think you're gonna see like a horde of Chinese grandmasters coming forth. That would just bust loose chess in like the Chinese mainstream. Bishop G seven. All right, so it's a the Marazzi bind. Yeah, not a lot of fun to play the black side of the Marazzi bind. This is the reason why a lot of people don't play the accelerated dragon. But actually, it takes a lot of skill to play the white side of the Marazzi bind. Just something a lot of people don't realize. Ding Li Ren, interesting mention there. Yeah, I mean, the guy is obviously very talented and will be a force. Um, I think he just, you know, hasn't been around long enough to even conceivably win a match against Carlsen yet, but he is almost 20, he's around 2800 already. It's kind of scary. I've only seen a couple games from Ding Loran. I, I, Loran, I, I didn't like follow his play. Um, but what I saw was he seemed to be very um, systematic, like no weaknesses. Um, Possibly a little bit robotic in style. I think he needs some more experience. There's no no substitute for knowledge. I mean, in, in terms of knowledge, I mean, Kramnik and Carlson. Um, 
Krennic maybe has the most. Let's see, here we go again. Are you serious? Didn't I just play 